Hi, welcome back at Element 14 Presents. My name is Mark. In today's episode, if you're old enough, I will take you on a trip down memory lane. And if not, then just remember this as being a project that's easy to build and a lot of fun to play around with. Let me explain. Back in the 80s, before every home had a personal computer, we had these little 8-bit computers called home computers. And I'm talking about the Commodore 64, the Atari, the ZX Spectrum, the VIC-20, you name it. Those computers were mostly used to play games um, or do a little programming. And uh, you could do a little basic and even machine coding. And a lot of people who uh, started out, or who are doing uh, programming today, started out with one of these hobby computers. Now, where I'm going with this, uh, the other day I was cleaning up my basement and I found actually my very first PCB I ever designed. And this was done by um, taking a copper plate and drawing lines on it with a permanent marker and then emerge it into chemicals. And what you will get is a board with traces. And then after drilling some holes, of course, I added the components. What about this project? Well, back in the days, in the 80s, uh, you could buy these speech modules that you can use with your computer. There was a cartridge that you plug into your computer and you could make the computer talk. We're talk, still talking 8-bit computers like the Commodore, the Atari, um, and this was a big step forward in technology at the time. Um, so I built this, I played around with it, um, and it was all based on a, a single chip called the SP0256. Now, I play with it, I put it in a drawer, I forgot all about it, and now almost 40 years later, I found it. And I'm thinking, hmm, this was so much fun. Will it still work? So this is the actual PCB um, from 40 years ago. Uh, there's an uh, oscillator, a crystal, a uh, chip, and of course a small audio amplifier. And as you can see, it holds a lot of old components. Probably those electrolyte capacitors are dried up completely after so many years of just doing nothing. So I'm not even going to bother with this. I'm going to set it aside. I will take out the chip first. And we're going to reuse the chip on the breadboard and just add some new external components following the data sheet. But before we do that, let me talk you through the schematics. So this chip only needs a few external components to function. Of course, we have an oscillator. Uh, it's internally, but it needs an external uh, crystal and one or two capacitors to function. And it functions around four megahertz. Now, you can play around with that frequency if you change the crystal uh, and you take crystal that's uh, 3.99 or 3.95 and little variations like 10 kilohertz, then you can hear a change of pitch. Well, um, we also have a filter because the sound that's coming out of the, the chip is a, a bit funky. And of course we have an amplifier because we want to hear it. And it's basically a simple amplifier around LM386. We also need a microcontroller to drive it and I decided to use an Arduino. I have an Uno laying around, so that's going to be perfect. And beside a few control lines, we have a data, uh, an address bus that's used to select whatever sound I want to play. And it's actually an 8-bit uh, bus, but we're only using 6 bits. It was designed for 8 because the chip uh, can be used with external ROMs to extend the library. We're not going to do that, so we only need six bits, which means the two most significant bits will be grounded. So now that I explained the schematic, let's take a look at the breadboard. I put all the components there. Uh, there's the crystal, the chip. Of course, we have our LM386 amplifier, a little speaker, and a lot of wires. Uh, actually, not that much, but a few wires to communicate with the Arduino Uno. When I started this project, uh, it was out of curiosity and nostalgia. And well, the way I was thinking is if it's fun to do, let's do it. And apparently I wasn't the only one because it turns out in the past, uh, other people have done this too. And better, someone even wrote a library to be used with Arduino. So that's going to make my work a lot easier. Now, what we need to do is program it first. For that, we'll plug it in. Okay, so to use this chip with an Arduino, we need to install a library first. Um, so let me do that first. We go to uh, sketch and include library from zip file. 
and we point it to the right zip file and for me uh, that's where I'm going so the library is called sp0256 Arduino lib and I will make sure to include that file on the project page for that you can check out the element 14 community so let's install that now you see the library has been added to your libraries and all you need to do now is open the example for that we go to examples and we find the uh, library that I just installed which would be sp0256 adrenolib and there it is now let me talk you through the example first we include our library and we define the one line that's important to uh, communicate with the chip without of course the uh, data bus and that's going to be pin 8 for us and then what we do in the setup is nothing that's easy and for the main loop all we do is repeat a few words and we say welcome to element 14 uh, presents talking memories and after one second and we'll keep repeating that in a loop now as you can see all the words are made up of individual sounds it's basically the principle of all phone synthesis and what it does it emulates each and every sound in a word so I dare you to make it sound in your own language it's possible and it's definitely a lot of fun to play around with so once you select the right board uh, that for us that's Arduino Uno make sure you select the right COM port uh, press compile and upload and you're good to go So if you want to build this uh, setup, uh, you might be confused with all the wires and you, well, maybe you think it's hard. Trust me, it's really not. Just follow the schematics. It's not that hard to build. Uh, it's probably harder to get your hands on a working chip. And that's a good point because this chip is obsolete and the ones that are going around on the internet are often fake or old and broken. So it's basically playing the lottery. Because I still want you to have fun with this circuit there's an alternative. Nowadays, we have an ESP32. And indeed, it can emulate this SP0256 chip without the need of having one. Okay, now I don't have to implement the audio chip. Our schematic just became a lot easier. So first we have our ESP32 that's used to emulate the audio chip. The audio output, which basically comes from the internal dock, goes to a filter because we want to do some noise filtering. And finally, we need to amplify the sound. I use an amplifier from a PAM8403. It'll piggyback. However, you can also use the audio amplifier we used in a previous setup with the LM386. Here's a hint for later. If you're going to experiment with the singing version, then you need to change the filter input by connecting it to a different output of the ESP32. Change pin 22 to pin 25. Uh, of course you need to install a library and I will show you exactly how that is done. First thing you need to do is program it, for that we plug it in. So in order to emulate the SP0256 chip on an ESP32 there's a few things we need to do. First we need to uh, select the right board. For us there should be a folder ESP, uh, sorry, boards, there should be a folder ESP Arduinos if there's not, then you still need to add that library. You can do so by going to Preferences and then click this icon and make sure that you add this line. Once that is done, you can go to the Boards uh, Manager and then you type ESP32 and make sure you select the one from um, Express System and not the Arduino. We need this one. I got version 206 installed. You can try a newer one, but this is working for me, so I'll leave it at that. And then you press install. Now, once that is done, you need to install the library. I will include the library with the uh, project files that you can find on the project page. And for that, we go to include library at zip file. So then the library I use is the ESP32 EasyTalk. That's how I named it. Um, you press open and it will install. What you need to do next is uh, go to the examples 
and then find the ESP8266 SAM and you select the speak no doc example. Now you can, everything is green here, you can just delete or leave it as is. Okay, so what we do is first we define and initialize the audio uh, library that we're going to use and then uh, we're going to go through a main loop in which we will repeat the same sentence over and over again. I make it say, welcome to element 14, talking memories that will take you back to the 80s. Of course, you can change that to whatever you like. And this is basically a speech printer. Whatever you put in here, it will say, or it will try to say. Uh, you can have some fun playing around with that. And once you select the right COM port, and then you press compile and upload, um, it will start making sound. The compilation of this one might take a while because the audio library is quite uh, huge. Don't worry about that, just wait and see what happens. It might take a few minutes, but then you have all the fun at your fingertips. And it will sound like this. Now imagine that, sound coming from a single chip, 8-bit, and it can basically say everything you want in English, if you program it right. And from there we move to a software emulated version of the chip that increased the quality a lot. I can do you one better. There's even a version that can make your ESP32 sing. This is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure enjoyed it. I recreated some childhood memories and I'm sure if you tinkered around with this before, then uh, you will agree that's a lot of fun. If you haven't, I dare you, try it. At least if you cannot get your hands on the hardware, try the ESP32 emulated version um, to create its robotic voice and you can do a lot of fun stuff with it. Um, remember, if you have any questions, visit the Element14 community. There's a project page and we'll put all the information there you need and you can ask me questions and leave comments. Uh, for now, I'm going to play around with this a bit more and maybe I will introduce it to Alexa to see if uh, Alexa knows what else we can do with it. But that's something for a whole new video. I'll see you next time.